Yeah, so you guys came up with the DH. Anything to ruin the purity of a game. That's what you're excited about. So I didn't even know this. I heard you, uh, Eastside Dave, had a bad day today. Yeah, I'm coming in on the subway today. What train? Queens, the uh, W train, mm -hmm. right there from uh, Ditmas Avenue. And uh, first uh, stop, I get in. And I'm drinking a Coca-Cola. Which you're not allowed to do on a train. Am I right there? Yeah, you're right. You're not supposed to eat, drink, play. Or be your... merry. Yeah. You can't eat, drink, or be merry on the train. <laughs> I've never heard that before. But anyway. Sure you have, because you don't read. I'm drinking the Coca-Cola. And this huge, like, you know, black uh, homeless guy. I mean, I'm seriously 6'5". You're 6'5"? You're no, he was 6'5". Oh, okay, because you said I'm seriously 6'5", and I'm doubting that. I'm saying he was uh, about 6'5", and he comes over. As soon as the doors open up, he walks right next to me and snatches my Coca-Cola from me. He doesn't say a word to you? He doesn't say a word, and it was really one of the scariest things of my life. Like, it was so brutal, and I, was, I looked like I felt like I was looking into the eyes of a devil or a lion or something. It was it was very National Geographic-ish. All right, so first of all, this is not just a regular homeless guy. No. This is the world's strongest, biggest homeless <laughs> He, he was huge, and he, he was definitely homeless, no question, because he, you know, had the trench coat and the facial hair, and just, it, right. was, it was a very scary-looking dude. So he doesn't say a word, he just yanks your coke out of your hand. Doesn't say a Like you're a child. He takes the coke out of my hand, then the best part is he sits on the seat next to me, and I'm so scared, I'm thinking, should I get up? Should I flee off the train? Like, what should like I do? Like a woman? Do? Yeah, like yeah. a... And... He starts drinking the Coke in front of me, and here's actually the toughest move I've ever seen. He gets to where it's almost done, and he offers me some. Sure. He extends the bottle to me, and as if he's saying, like, do you want some? And I just shake my head. No, I don't want to go <laughs> Take some homeless backwash. I swear to God, I had such a vagina. Then I finally got up and walked to the back of the train and just stared at him the entire time. Did anybody say anything to you? No like, one. Sorry, you lost your Coke. No one said a word, and... Um, you know, and everyone just let him get, get away with it. And he was having a big ball the whole time. Had his feet up, drinking my Coca-Cola. You ought to try to sue some of those other passengers on the Good Samaritan law. No one helped Is you. there any medal that you can get that's the opposite of hero? Do they give out a medal for just being branded and running away? The bronze chicken. I could definitely gotten shot for cowardice if this was World War II. No question about it. And I have never seen a six foot five homeless guy in my life. I guarantee you, this guy was five eight, a buck fifteen, like a normal homeless guy. How old would you say he was? I would say he was early forties. Early forties. And you let him take your coke. Yeah, I I totally let him take it because it was Ronnie, you don't understand. His eyes were so dark. And and that evilness that like comes. I don't so, know if he's uh, infected with diseases. So uh, apparently this is some kind of extra strength that he has outside of what we understand in here in, on the human sense. There's some superhuman powers that this coke stealer has. Yeah, he definitely had much more, uh, much stronger strength than mortals. I mean, the way he <laughs> snatched it was so fast and so. Would you say it was like taking candy from a redheaded ugly baby? In, in essence, I would say, I'm telling you for real, it was really scary, and I, I couldn't believe it. Hey, truck stop, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, man, sounds like Esau was in that uh, Mean Joe Green uh, commercial, you know, when he fucking gives the guy <laughs> the coke and shit. He does act like Mean Joe Green uh, has no place to live, and now goes away taking sodas off the sissy little boys. At the end, did he throw his old AIDS-infested trench coat to you? <laughs> no, he was as tall as Mean Joe Green, no question about it. I know it's a lie. I do not believe you for a second. You just back down to any homeless guy. Homeless guys are not considered tough. Well, Normally, they're weakened by what society is, has, has wreaked upon them. These are guys that have already given up because they can't handle the rough-and-tumble world that the rest of us have. Most of them can't move because of their open wounds. I just figure like he might have had a syringe on him, you know, filled with a disease that he, he could eject in me. What's so sure. funny about that? It happens. Well, who would do that? Who, now he's a mad scientist. Uh, hey, David, what do you got for us? Well, I'll tell you what. I don't think that guy would have got there sort if he had jivey with him. <laughs> you should have had jivey ready to talk him down. <laughs> same, brother. We're the same skin color. Did they get another that one? Uh, no, that, that, that's check. Oh, that's no. check. Three zero. Is that three zip? That's oh. it. They're showing halftime highlights. Oh, oh wow. fuck off. Check is, check is in white. And, uh, oh, my God. I am not going to believe anything that you have to say to me anymore, Dave. 
the fact you let a fucking homeless guy steal from you. I mean, when the, someone is just that, like, um, scary looking and that, that's scary cool. looking, you can show those people a card trick and confuse them. They're out on the streets because they're half retarded. Is the homeless guy more scared of Dave than, because, you know, Dave's kind of got an unusual appearance? Why is this guy homeless? He could live in Dave's house because Dave would just walk to the back of his yard and stand there. Actually, now that I think about it, that's the second time it's ha because, um, well, I mean, your situation actually happened to me. When I was 14 years old, I was watching TV in my house, and this, our, we always leave our doors open in Spring Lake, and this, we live across the street from a church, this black lady just comes in wa wa wandering into our house. Wandering or wandering? Wandering in, into our house, and she was saying, you know, like, does anyone have my lunch? And I was wondering what What'd the hell was do? going Start on. Start making peanut butter and jelly and fucking... <laughs> Uh, crackers as quick as you could. No, but my mom says it was the funniest thing because I. Who got my goddamn lunch? <laughs> I know I best get some lunch. Here. Oh, and one more thing. I want Coke Macola with it. Well, apparently they had a free lunch program in the church across the street, and she just got the yeah, wrong address. The free lunch is looking at a fucking redhead and taking whatever uh, he's got for himself. But I just stared straight at the TV, and I like watch Transformers eating my own food. <laughs> pretending and, you didn't and see it. And my that. mom was pretending that I didn't see it. And my mom still talks about it to this day. And I almost cry every Thanksgiving because she <laughs> thinks it's the funniest thing. I love it because it just shows how you fucking gloss over when trouble <laughs> comes around. Hey, Breadstick, you're on Ronnie Fez. What's up, buddy? Yeah. Uh, I believe I got an odor of pussy coming through my mind fire from listening to those East, uh, East Side Day story. I mean, I I'm, I definitely have just some reservations about strange people. Like, I'm not scared if it was a... Stern uh, stood up to a homeless guy and made the fucking paper. Look at you. So he's like seven <laughs> feet tall. Uh, everybody's... Oh, that is a good way to put it. You add six inches to everybody. <laughs> like your own dick. There's nothing you could have possibly done. You could have been killed if you tried to save your coke. Telling you, this guy was evil, man. He was evil, and I, I was not about to get some weird shot of some kind of cancer or whatever. No fucking homeless guy is smart enough to keep cancer in a syringe. They're homeless because they can't do any normal thing a person can do. Society is too difficult for them. Rather than get a job and work or even steal, they sleep outside on church steps. <laughs> this guy was able to outmaneuver you. Just so you know it. It was not an evil genius. He was, was a really, subhuman, basically. Well, he, he he was really fast. I will say that. And even if you don't... Sure. Uh, next to a paralyzed with fear person, I'm sure he looked completely fast. No! No! I, look, I liked how you eventually stood up to him and moved to the back. <laughs> Did you wipe any of your own piss off here, or did you just lay there in it? No, but I was pretty frozen. I must have looked so pathetic to the rest of the train. <laughs> I'm sure. The whole thing I, going I, on. I, you should fucking walk to work from now on. You should be so embarrassed. A couple, a couple of those people I did recognize as people who take the sure. same train. Everybody grabs the same train at the same time. Now they know you. Everyone's Mr. Fucking Helpless. You act like it would have been rude to get up and not sit with the person who just robbed you. I don't, know, I, I don't know what other course of action I can take. What am I going to say? Like uh, You should have you... stomped your shit and took that coke back. That's the only thing you could have done. That's that's one way to look at it. I just, I'll, I'll leave that problem where it is, and I'll move on with my life. I'm... You're not going to move on. You've stuck this in the bag of shame that you haul around like Santa Claus. I, look, it has given me some real anger now towards homeless. It's I'm not be anger. You have no anger. You have fear. Anger is what happened before. This thing that you feel now is is embarrassment, shame. He is just lucky that my friend hasn't gotten me a piece because I would fucking Bernie get. I'm gonna I'm gonna Bernie oh, gets everybody. Now. Oh, is, I'm gonna Bernie gets them all, Ronnie. Is that right, Death Wish? You're gonna go down here. You're gonna clean up the city for the rest of us. It ain't gonna happen. You're going to fucking stay in your apartment now, afraid of Mikey D and a homeless guy. And you ever notice any of these guys that bother him are always some gigantic people? Well, maybe that's the fear talking. I don't know. but I, I think... Yes, it's the fear talking. Mm. How, was, how big was the old lady that stole a sandwich out of your house? Eight feet tall? She was about 6'2". 
Here comes Mom's Mabley, forcing that family to come up with a turkey club at a moment's notice. It, that was so weird because Spring Lake, I think it was maybe like one of the first times I'd ever even seen like a black person besides, you know, like playing against On TV. Sports, yeah. So for them, one, to walk into my house and then just to ask where her lunch was. Oh, Tom, you're on Run a Fez. Hi, gentlemen. How are you doing? Good. You know, Dave, I can't believe it. You know, you're sitting there telling this story. I mean, at least you should have showed a little balls and, you know, took the stuff back, you know, you drank back from the guy. And even if he gave you a beating, at least you could have said, you know, you took it back from him. You know, man, you know, unreal. Uh, My two-year-old daughter is tougher than you. It literally is going to play like on a movie loop on your eyelids every time you try to go to sleep. You're just going to see... The man that you call Tiny Zeus Lister, the homeless fucking giant, stealing that. Debo went and snatch your chains. And you got to do something about it. The one thing I did notice is like a good ten minutes after this incident, I'm replaying how I could have beaten him up, sure. like some awful action movie. Like there were karate kicks involved, and, and, and like, already now you're ready to buy a gun rather than just say that's not your fucking coke to a homeless guy who I guaranteed you he would have went into the corner because that's what they do. Yeah, I don't know. If if you saw the, the whites of these guys' eye, this guy's eyes. That's all he has. There's no fucking pupils there. He's given up. They lay on the street with a hat hoping somebody will throw them a quarter. They don't go through life taking things. I would have rather given him uh, some money. Next time, if he wants to I want to enjoy the beverage for the train the, ride. The scary guys on the train are the fucking Wall Street guys in those suits that are just out of their mind, all coked up and way in debt. They're the guys to fear. I'm sure you'll give them your watch or your iPod next. I may. I tell you what, I will never listen to my iPod on the train again. I'm going to tell you something right now, my friend. You did not, he did not take that Coke from you. Yeah. He took your balls from you, <laughs> and you know it, and I know it. You're going, you're walking around this city now, the main streets, just you and that shadow of fear that follows you everywhere. I'm definitely, I mean, I may look into taking boxing lessons or martial arts or something like that. And this, this, you feel like you can't that. defend yourself already now as an adult male. No, I think I. I can. mean, this is what a woman says. I'm going to take a defense course. A man doesn't <laughs> say to himself, "I now need to take a defense course." Were you raped at any point during this coke stealing? <laughs> it's just the the harrowing part. I've got into fights. The harrowing part is when a stranger. Take your coke, you. sits next to you, yeah, and, freaks, and puts his leg on you. It sounded like you said he had his leg up. Was he touching you? His sneaker was <laughs> yeah, exactly. the bottom of his shoe. Exactly. I hope this is Coca-Cola's next commercial. <laughs> I, you know, I, I just forget it. They're all savages. Who's Fucking, they? Uh, the homeless. Not no, no, not them. Homeless. They're not savages. They're poor, pathetic fucking souls that can't deal. They normally, Dave, they get our pity, sometimes our mercy. Never our fucking Coca-Cola. If Giuliani was back in office, none of this shit would be going <laughs> you on. You need Giuliani, a five-foot-four Italian, to protect you from the world. All right, there's Master Poe. He hasn't left. Master Poe, please come in here because we need to figure out what we're going to do with this redhead of pussy. <laughs> He's on the train today. A homeless guy, Master Poe, not normally known for their physical abilities, takes his basically lunch money, his morning beverage. Why'd you let that happen? Uh, he was, you know, he was a very scary looking um, a black homeless guy who was really intimidating and looked evil and he was very disheveled and I thought, this guy's bad news. Disheveled? Yeah, he That's was... not normally what we think of when the tough and the strong. <laughs> well, like his he had bad straggly face hair. And it was just it was a bad situation all around, so I'm not gonna get stabbed, you know, like I was telling Mr. B with a syringe full of, you know, cancer or a or HIV or something like that. Master it's not a mad scientist. <laughs> it's a fucking homeless guy who spent last night sleeping in a corner in dog piss. <laughs> Master Poe, how can we protect ourselves against the unshaven? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Just stay away from him, I guess. Uh, how big was the guy? Well, in my opinion, he was around six foot five or so. 
Six, six foot five. five. The world's tallest homeless man. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Where he was. I guarantee you he wasn't six foot. So when he six came foot. into the train, he was bending down. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he came, yeah, he came in, bent down a little bit, and then he, <laughs> he walks straight to me. On his knees. And No, no, I mean. He's he six was, foot five. Well, he, had, no, the train's high enough for those type of people. Those type? Tall people, Master Pro. White Pope. people are Tall. so scared of black people. And he swooped the coke so with such an angry face. I thought, <laughs> if, if I do something here, this guy's going to kill me. No one believes this story the way you're telling it. You know why? Because you over-exaggerate -exag all the time. Everything happened just like I said. Maybe I mean I don't know. Maybe the fear was making him I into a taller, slightly taller guy. He was definitely tall, guys. I swear he was tall. What do you and think? Big he and weighed? black. Um, two, two hundred, ten pounds. There's no such thing as a two ten homeless guy. They have pounds. no fucking food. <laughs> they sleep with fleas. They are not strong, aggressive people. Well, I mean, I, I, didn't, have a, I didn't have a scale with me. I, I've seen I bet it was an Ethiopian with flies all over his baby face. I mean, why would he do that, though, Master Paul, is my question. <laughs> is, you know, why, is he, why is there meanness in the world? <laughs> because he's seen weakness in your eyes. True. Well, just because I'm a blue-eyed person. And that's person. the retina. I don't know. I, 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 Were you I, looking terrified at him? After he... Took it. I was so, you know, I was, I was shaking? shaking a little. Yeah. And then when he offered me the coke back, it just fucking blew my mind. I was like, this is the weirdest fucking thing. He's offering me a sip of the Coca Cola he just stole from me, and I was. Well, like, that was at least kind. You saw you were thirsty. I know, but then, but he then probably it, felt bad because you were silently sobbing next to him. Well, when he offered me the coke, a sip of the coke back, I, I realized this guy is totally insane, and I'm not going to fight him, uh, Master. I'm not going to fight him because he's totally deranged. That's the know? high road. Well, look. Why are you sitting here feeling bad about yourself like there was other things that you could have done, though? Well, now I do think I should have said something like, um, <laughs> no, <Hey. laughs> that's, that's hey. not yours. Why didn't you yell, this is not my father, like they teach kids when they're snatched? <laughs> I should have at least say, hey, th you know, help or something. <laughs> help! Help! <laughs> you think Spider Man or someone would have shown up to save the day? Master Poe, has this ever even. Does this happen with your students? No. It's impossible, right? Well, nothing's impossible, but. What, what you have to understand is as soon as someone comes into the train, you have to look at your surroundings, and if they look like a threat, you have to pay attention to them. I'm going to next time. Yeah. I know exactly, you know, I have this all, the prototype of what this guy looks like. I have it figured out in my head, you know, and I'm not going to trust those kind of people anymore. Those kind? I, I used to. White people Homeless. are so scared of black people. Homeless. <laughs> hmm. I mean, he was that color, but no, I, I do mean homeless. Just because they're, if they don't have anything upstairs, th that makes them doubly dangerous. I mean, what Why, you are you doubly dangerous? Because you're fucking dumb as a rock. I'm talking about insane. Mm. If someone's crazy, wouldn't that make them dangerous? Yes. Yeah. You, I'm talking about. Oh. oh. The crazy stealing from the crazy. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's just such a weird thing. You know, it reminded me of that. Remember that there was that movie where the people lived under the tunnels? Um, it, was a, it was a documentary where it was homeless people who lived in the subway tunnels. So you honestly now think it was a troll yeah, who they stopped you from going over the bridge, you little billy goat. <laughs> you fucking puss. I don't know. Why didn't you queef at him, you fucking <laughs> big cunny? Make me sick that you come in here like so this. So what else did he do to you? I told you, he put his foot up like on the chair next to me, and his the bottom of his sneaker was probably touching my thigh a little bit. And then he offered Turning me on. a sip of the Coke back. He could have kicked you in the tampon. You allowed him to touch you? No, after Gently. I got up and went to the back of the train. And just said that's enough of that, you know. I don't need to stand for this. Did you get up because you you were smelling your own shit in your seat? You couldn't stand it anymore. <laughs> there there are things that you happen that I'll wish I I had changed. So you like your that. underwear? <laughs> so you put your foot down and you said I don't have to stand for this. Anymore. Yeah, and I'll go right to the back of the train. Walked away. Forget it. I just walk. I got out of there.
So I thought that in essence, because at first I was so paralyzed with fear that my legs wouldn't even move. So I had to feel the bottom of his shoe on my thigh. I'm like, this really sucks. And then when he offered me the Coke, I go, oh, fuck it. <laughs> fuck this. I'm out of here. Did you say that loud or inside? No, 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 no. Inside. Everything was going on in my yeah. head. Were you able to look at the other passengers on the train, or were you just so shamed at that point you couldn't make eye contact <laughs> with other commuters? How many more stops? <laughs> I did look at this one woman who I'd seen before. She was like a pudgy woman in, in her, like, mid-50s. Six foot five. Yeah, we know. <laughs> no, but and she saw the whole thing go down, and I looked at her for help. And she was like, what the fuck are you looking at me for? Go and take the coke back. The 80s are back. Let's face it. <laughs> Bloomberg is taking this city back to the 80s. It's true, though. Get a fucking grip on the city, Mayor. <laughs> Stop with the cigarettes and bars. They're taking our Cokes. The banishing smoking and bars. Meanwhile, we got homeless people running amok. <laughs> I don't know if the headline in the post tomorrow is going to be Crime Wave returns to city. See, the only problem is that this guy was testing you. Now, in this case, you walked away and you got away with it. However... In another situation, they may come up to you and say, okay, well, let me have your Coke, and you say, no, and they'll take it from you. What else are they going to take from you? My wallet. And what else? iPod. And what else? Oh, dignity. Something like that. Is that what you're going for? <laughs> <laughs> Trick question. <laughs> I get what you're saying. They're taking my guts Well, away you never know. Um, yeah, well, there's a lot I wish I had done differently. I, I, I swear I will. What but, would you have done differently? Well, uh, next time it, ha it happens... Had your I'm, mom drive you to work? I'm going to just say, get <laughs> off. No, I'm going to go, get off, like that. And I will look into, at least, if I can't get a piece, get in some mace or well, pepper spray. You can't have a piece in the city. I, well, then I'll get pepper spray. I, I'll get pepper yeah, spray. Yeah, all the girls have that. It really fucking works well. <laughs> you ever been pepper sprayed? It just really makes you angry. <laughs> just really pisses you off. No, I've never. He'll still take your coke and just pour it in his eyes to get the sting out. Uh, here's uh, T Bagger. T, you're on the Ron and Fez show. How are you, buddy? Hey, buddy. Yeah. Listen, I want to know if this homeless guy had a chef's hat on. I get it. No, he was. Uh, are you going to tell her that you checked this story? No, I'm not. Should gonna... I? I mean, I'm worried about her safety now. No, don't say it to anybody. He include my like my parents. I'll I hope call my them. Mom... <laughs> How's Dave after the mugging? <laughs> they will take me out of Queens. <laughs> they will make me go right back into the basement. Yeah, whatever happened to you moving to Money Making Manhattan? Where did that go? Where's that dream? She has to get, you know, she has to get a job. I uh -huh. can't f afford Manhattan on my own. So once Westside gets the job, we'll look to do that. You know, and that that will be a fun adventure. Maybe get a place right around Master. Po do you live in Manhattan? I live in Jersey. No, I live in New Jersey. Oh. Maybe around you, Ronnie? You ought to get one right next door to Master Poe with a fucking buzzer. <laughs> so I can protect you? <laughs> it's not a bad idea. <laughs> I've just never seen anyone manhandled by a homeless person before. You might call me when the Girl Scout cookies come over. See, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, you know, they, 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 they'll spit. Even if they don't punch you, they'll spit on you and things. No, I've been riding the subways all my life. I have never heard of this before in my life. If anything, any... Any slight resistance, they take off like, you know, when you turn the light on, the cockroaches right. flee. Any chance of resistance These or people arrest. are already beaten down by life. Life has been difficult for them. But Earl is uh, a little bit more intimidating, you know, with the black and everything. And he white has a... people are so scared of black people. He just looks stronger and stuff, even though he not necessarily is. He just looks it. But here's the thing. I mean, you must feel bad or you would have just said to us, Hey, I bought a homeless guy Coke today. We all went, well, oh, that's nice. But there's something inside you that feels like it's been broken, that feels like it's been damaged. Yeah, I feel like I've been fucking victimized here, and I want something done about it. I mean, what the hell? You can't have, you know, crazy people doing this type of stuff. Usually uh, when homeless people jack somebody, it's a woman, like a purse, and they're usually asleep. So. Right. Well, there were a couple women on the train that looked tougher than Dave. That Dave looked to for help and sat there. If he had tried to take a wallet or my iPod, I would have done something. Bullshit. No, I would have. Bullshit. You told us you were paralyzed with fear. Well, that is true. So you wouldn't have done anything. Uh, I, I think I would have been paralyzed with fear. He would have gotten the wallet and the iPod, and then I would have went back to the train, to the back of the train, rehuddled, and sort of like you know, kind of charged at him. Or so. I would have come up with a plan. He sure. would have been gone by then. 
No, no, no. I was following where he There's not a lot of plannings in street fights. It's either on or it's off. Well, I would have done some calculations in my head and gotten that stuff back. I figured it was just a Coke, you know. No, you didn't. You sat here all up today upset about it. Well, that's true. And I you am. said you've been violated. So you never at any point went, this is just a Coke. It's not worth it. You paralyzed with fear. With the act itself, yes. I was so victimized. Right. I can't believe it, you know. And I'm I'm still a little bit shaken over it, to be honest with you. Fez, you want to check his underwear and see if there was any seepage? I believe there was. I'll check, because the way he's talking, he's gone through a prison rape here. It should take three to five seconds for you to handle this situation. How would That's I it. do that? Well, come down to the school and I'll teach you for free. Come down for a month. I'm, I don't want to have to take another train ride. Cause I, <laughs> <laughs> He'd have to get on the path train. <laughs> I can only take the subway. Like now, you know, I have my, my elevators thing. I'm telling you, this is going to just put What's your elevator? You're there. afraid of getting beat up going on an elevator? <laughs> By an elevator. Going down elevators, and now I'm going to feel like subway's a uh, death trap. By after. the way, we need you to do this, too. I need you to do a phone call with us later All right. in the top of the Empire State Building. I want to just find out what it's like up there. I'll be walking. I'll walk through the whole way up and the whole way down. <laughs> oh, you Do can't. they let you? I don't, I don't think, think so. you're allowed to walk up that building. And besides, you know how many homeless are living in the stairwells <laughs> of the Empire State Building? You'd have to face at least one of your fears. That's fine with me. Next homeless guy who tries it with me, in case you're listening out there, I am fucking decking you. Because I'm just <laughs> Homeless you know. people do not have satellite radio unless they see you first. <laughs> then they'll have a fucking... Then they'll be set up. Well, whatever. If word spreads, if word gets around town that you're homeless and, and I'm, I'm your new easy mark, I'm telling you right... And, you know, this is, this is just another reason why I'm seriously considering dyeing my hair black. Because he sees the red hair why don't and the pale skin... It? And I'm, go ahead, laugh it up, Master Paul, but... Irish guys fight at the drop of yes. a hat. Red hair is a reason not yes. to fight somebody. <laughs> I do. I've gotten into fights. It's just with the strangers. When strangers start picking on you, I think it's because of the red hair, because everyone has heard the phrase, beat Every... you like a redhead. No, stepchild. <laughs> Child. When you run into Irish guys in these bars, you say the slightest wrong thing, they headbutt you into the bridge of your nose and, and destroy the next six months of your life. But that, that seems more like a black Irish tree. I don't know. Here's uh, our buddy Photoshop, Mike. Mike, how are you, pal? Hey, buddy, what's going on? Hey. Th this sounds a lot like uh, Public Greenwich Village. They took my coke! Well, maybe it, you well, know. That's a little bit of a reach to go uh, Public Greenwich Village, but... It was an embarrassment for you today. Yeah, it was a terrible, it, more, even more than embarrassment. It was a really negative experience that will. I will Why don't you join one of those groups with the rest of the rape victims and you all can sit around and cry on each other all night? I do need a group, uh, some group therapy, no question about it. Let me throw out this scenario to you. Let's say the same thing happened to you on the train, except your chick Westside is with you. Then what do you do as you're being manhandled in front of her? Oh, man. They just take her. He fucking... <laughs> he trips her and runs out the back. That's a pretty crazy question. I I would maybe say something, but I probably wouldn't. I would just go to the back and say... Why don't can, you can go you to Master Post School? He's going to give you a month. All right. You'll come out of that a fucking killing machine. Is there a way I can... Maybe you could do it... Like, come to my apartment. We could do house training. Go yes. To you. Yeah, he's going to go to you because you you're want me so to go to your house. Afraid of the world because you're afraid of of going on the train, the train to Jersey. I mean, mm. it's a long it's a long ride. Tell everybody about your website, Master Poe. Masterpoeisback.com. I teach boxing, kickboxing, jujitsu, stick fighting, knife fighting. Ooh. Uh, whatever you want to learn, I'll teach you. Anti-soda theft? <laughs> Anti-soda theft. I'd love to learn the stick fighting. I think okay. that would be fun. What do you? What, what is your field there with carbonated beverages? <laughs> what is the best way to deal? Shake it up and try to spray it in their faces? Here is uh, Rich. Rich, you're on my face. Hey, Eastside Dave. Uh... I wouldn't be surprised if uh, that black guy's gonna, that uh, homeless guy's gonna be waiting for you every day. He knows you're an easy mark now. Takes your soda and you just kind of cringe. It's lunch that money. Is you. Why well, don't you change your train up? Go with another train. See, I could take either the. You. I could take either the. He just the gave you a rape whistle. <laughs> 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 Try it out. <laughs> yeah. Help. Yeah. This is this will work with me. 
Um, I could pro- I'll probably switch it to the N train. And I will know. Black people are so scared of black people. To me, they're all the end train, and I don't care where they're going. That's all I see. Come on, Dave. You can't show any fear. Enough of that. You can't show any fear at all. No, I just, I definitely need a weapon, though. I definitely need a weapon. Even if it's like a, some kind of shock thing or something, some sort of stick, you know, that would be my best bet. Well, Here's your problem. If you had that shock thing, as you call it, in your pocket, you're paralyzed with fear. You're not going for it. You were paralyzed with fear. You told us that your legs yeah. wouldn't move because a homeless guy took your coke. But I think if I had the weapon in me, I wouldn't become That's paralyzed That's where it would be, fear. in you. I have a feeling he'd take that off you, shock your fucking neck. Exactly. He's going to take it from you because you, you're not responding quick enough. Well, I don't know. I'm going to think about this. Over and over again. Forever. Maybe I can go on that tram. Is that tram up? Maybe I'll do that. I'll just avoid the subways. No. The tram's down. Oh, fuck. I don't know what to what to do. Get one of the guys that has a car out here, and, and he'll drive you. Drive right. you out to New Jersey twice a week, and in a month you'll be fine. I'm just talking about getting into work. You know, oh. That's going to be a whole experience now. You're afraid to come to work? No, I just as long as someone gives me some, some protection or something like that, be it a security guard or a weapon of, of, of some sort, I mean, you know. You got your rape whistle. Oh, I'll, I'll use it. I'll use my whistle. Just blow that anytime you see a black guy in the city. Just start fucking freaking out. <laughs> what is that noise? It's been going on all day. Oh, sorry. I was looking at Earl for a second. That was your joke? We'd all laugh if we thought you had any aggression in you at all. But right now, we can't make fun of Earl because we have Dave in our midst. Uh, here's uh, Chris. Chris, you're on Ron Fez. Yeah, I'm a seven foot three, 150 pound homeless guy from Atlanta wanting to know when Dave gets paid. <laughs> Fucking guys from Atlanta thinking they can beat you up. This is how far the show has sunk. Hey, he has a radio, too. <laughs> guys in Atlanta are feeling superior right now. Bring it on. Guys from Buckhead, and he's feeling like he could take change off of you. One of them's Elton John. I won't be carrying Cokes around. That much I know will change. No more Cokes on the subway. None at all, huh? Zero. You'll hide your Coke for later. Exactly. When you said someone stole your Coke, I'm like, hey, that's going to happen to you in your lifestyle. I didn't know you meant a Coca-Cola. Here's uh, Eric. Eric, you're on Fez. Yeah, hey, buddy. Got two things for you. Hey, Eastside, uh, does your chick know just how much of a pussy you really are? No, I don't think so. Does she know she's involved in lesbian sex? Has that (laughs) dawned on her at any point? And and, and the second thing is, uh, Earl, I think uh, twice a day you just need to walk up to him and go, boo. I think they'll take care of it. Uh, You know, he'll just be cowering in the corner. So far, Mikey D has come to your house. And you've called the cops with someone uh, who you now who you said was a giant, and Mikey said, of course, wasn't. And I'm more apt to believe Mikey at this point. And now you've lost your coke to a homeless guy. Did you consider trying to grab a cop when you got out of the subway? Oh, Why no. would he? No, I didn't. I didn't. I just thought, fuck it, forget it. But that was actually a good idea, Fez. Doyle, you're on run of Fez. Hey, Dave's got to be excommunicated from the Irish race. He does seem the least Irish of any redhead, freckled bastard I've ever seen in my life. I am part Scottish, and maybe... They, yeah, they're not known for fighting. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little bit German, so... Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Ask Poland how they do. <laughs> there was no reason for you to feel this way. Are you Swiss or French by any chance? You know what? I'm not trying this for, you know, to be shock or whatever or be anything like that. It, it, it's a bigger adjustment coming uh, and hanging out with so many black people and black homeless people, you know, just walking so right up to you. Now you've turned this into a race thing. I'm not. I'm not. I swear to God. It's just an adjustment. I think All right, let me ask this. If it was a white homeless guy, would he, if he had taken your coke? I think so. I think yes. I would have got... So stop blaming the race. <laughs> but what I think is, what I'm saying is, I think I would have uh, not been paralyzed with fear. I would have responded to the white homeless man. I think I would have. To me, you got away with just losing a coke. Let it fucking go. That's all, right. all it is. Right if it now. was a homeless person in a wheelchair, they would have taken your coke. Uh, yeah, and I'm just saying, it's just the, the adjustment. But once I work it, work through the diversity of New York City, I'll be fine. Hey, uh, Jackie, you're on Run of Fez. 
Dave, you need to grow some balls. Quit being a pussy. You can do okay. it. All right. Well, that's well, women saying well, grow balls. Why? But, why are you afraid? There's a lot of scariness in the world, Jackie. I mean, you talk know. to her like it's your mommy. <laughs> 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 Crawl on her lap and sob. Help me. Dave. Yes, mom. Why? I don't know why I did it. It was something. It was a bad <laughs> choice. But it, now you're afraid to go to work. You're afraid to go train with Master Poe. Yeah, well, I'm afraid of subways now. But you know that that will hopefully change. I don't know, mom. Try thinking of them as death boxes instead of subways. Dave, you're just a drama queen. You really are a drama queen. Only I would drop the drama. You're just a queen. And yeah, queen. I, I agree. Did you see that uh, queen got beat up downtown the other day? Oh, yeah, the uh, the drag uh, queen, the cross-dresser. Well, yeah, what exactly happened there? Um, I guess leaving the club or something for street toughs. We're yelling uh, sexual-oriented uh, slurs at him, her, and then uh, beat the hell out of him. Wow. That does sound a little bit, little bit like someone in this room. That's someone being me, I guess, you know. What are you talking about? The drag queen getting beat up by... So you now feel like the drag queen. Well, I... doesn't I could, feel safe in the city. I'm just saying I can identify with, like, you know, maniacs who are just picking on the innocent and the good-hearted. <clears throat> Maybe I'll turn into Batman. Yeah, this and, whole thing by the over. way, by, by the way, let me just say this. For the most part, I'm a pacifist. And... and uh, not the way you talk. Not the way you, I heard the shit that you've said about Earl before. <laughs> Mikey T, you're always talking about kicking ass. Here was your chance to prove it. I've never heard you act like you're a pacifist. You always demand us to say that you're an athlete. Almost every day, you say to somebody, they better respect you as an athlete. Well, yeah, but I mean, athletes can be passive. I don't believe necessarily in fighting. You know, I think we can conquer. I ourselves. wouldn't either if I was you. If I fucking pissed myself every time there was trouble, I wouldn't believe in it either. Well, so you believe for the first time that you met me, you wanted to challenge me to an arm wrestle. <laughs> that's right. But yet you can't take your coke back from your uh, from that's, this homeless. I, that's Eastside like Gandhi over there. I saw the arm wrestling challenge as more of like a feat of strength. I didn't see that as violence. I would say getting your coke back as a feat of strength. <laughs> I'll try something. It's too late. Uh, MasterPoeIsBack.com MasterPoeIsBack.com uh, And you've got a lot of classes going there now, Master Poe? Yes, I teach from morning till night uh, on Saturdays, and then Monday through Thursday I teach till about 10 o'clock at night. So there would you would make some space in a class for this kid if he shows up and throws himself into it. It would work for it. You could turn Dave around. Yeah, he could attend my nine-year-old class. I'd be great for you, Dave. Great place to start. No, no, no. I'll, I'll make all him... whites. He needs an all white class. I'll turn him from a, a kitten to a tiger. How's that? That would be good. How long are your um? How long is the uh, the ride from Queens to New Jersey? Or how long does it take? About forty minutes. Okay, that's fine for me then. I'm those, up for it. Those nine year olds are going to be waiting there to take your soda. All right, let's take a break. We're right back, Ron and Fez. Oh, Ron and Fez, XM two o two.